Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. How are you? Pretty good. I'm still coughing. Yeah. Like a I, lot. <laughs> I'm, st- I'm still coughing some, but not so yeah. much. I'm, I'm on much medicine to yeah. try to prevent this. So I'm on no medicine, but I did go get an x-ray done, so mm-hmm. I will probably be on medicine soon. Yeah. Well, it, and what I was told is that I'm essentially I am perfectly healthy, but uh, I did so much coughing when I wasn't that I um, that I got bronchitis and uh, that this is a feedback loop, essentially. Oh, so, really? yeah, the um, so your, your throat is uh, irritated and um, inflamed and that triggers you coughing and then coughing makes your throat irritated and inflamed. Yeah. Which, Triggers coughing and so on. So, so, so the fix is to stop coughing. Yes. Um, so I was. Let given, me know when you figure out how to do that. Well, it. I was given a cough suppressant. It has not worked that well. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, but it has its moments. Right. So, well. Yeah. Um, it does. It's not as effective as I had hoped or expected. Yeah. But it may be doing something sometimes. Oh well. At least for go. the <laughs> first couple of hours after I take it. Well, that's something. Yeah. Um. And then uh, steroids. Is that some of that can't operate heavy machinery cough syrup? Uh, it's not syrup. It's the little pearls. Oh, okay. The, so the, you can operate heavy machinery? Well, it says you should be careful. Okay. Then and it says alcohol good. may intensify this effect. Oh, I yeah, haven't the, tried those, it. Yeah, those are, the, those are the good ones then. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, I also have muscle relaxers because I finally had a cough that caught me out guard oh, yeah. uh, last weekend. And, and I pulled, you pulled something muscle? in my back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Man, that sucks getting old, dude. I, seriously, <laughs> I, well, that that kind of thing used to happen to me when I was younger. I, oh, like, really? I had I had issues with back spasms when I was uh, when I was a teenager. So, okay, starting when I so was so this a isn't an old guy thing. No, well, I mean, I it probably it's, it's not helping, more. right? I, yeah. I, I I have to say that I actually said to somebody somewhere along the way um, that I was kind of impressed with what kind of shape I was in that I had gone this long coughing so much without pulling a muscle, and yeah. then, like, and then days you did it, later, yeah. yeah. Um, but oh well. Yeah. Uh, just to start things off, I'm going to try and finish with this too, so that I don't. That if you skip our intro and maybe you don't skip our exit, and maybe if you <laughs> skip our exit, you don't skip our intro. Anyway, if you're skipping around, you're going to get it one way or the other. Yeah, is that what you're saying? That's the hope. <laughs> um, is uh, there is <coughs> that wasn't any better. It doesn't wow. matter. Oh wow! Well. I'm going to do yeah. the best I can. We should get you. We should have gotten you a pillow. Ah, uh, yeah, to cough into. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, okay, so there is a war powers resolution that's been introduced in the House of Representatives in the U.S. to end the support for the, uh, the quote, Saudi-led war in Yemen um, that couldn't happen without the U.S. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, and there's some nonprofit, I don't remember what, um, that has set up a, uh, a phone number that you can call, and it, the website's the same, um, which is 1-833-STOP-WAR. So there's 1-833-STOPWAR.com, and then the number itself is 1-833-STOPWAR. It sounds um, pretty easy to remember. Yeah. Um, and it, uh, all it, it'll do, it, what it'll do is it'll ask you your zip code, you punch in your zip code, and then it will, uh, in succession, connect you to your representative's office and then your senator's offices. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I would like to urge everyone to call during business hours and tell them that you want them to support or co-sponsor uh, the bill um, to stop the Yemen war or to stop U.S. support for the U.S. Yemen support war. for Yemen war. I remember they did this before with Trump in office and Trump vetoed it and they didn't have enough to overcome the veto. Biden had said before he entered <laughs> office that he wanted to put an end to this war. He hasn't. Um, but maybe he won't veto it. And maybe, uh, since it got introduced with the Democrat in the white house anyway, they could overcome the veto. Yeah. Don't know. Um, my recommendations to people, and this is somewhat tongue in cheek, but it's not far off because I think that in most cases, these arguments would be effective. Uh, and you're talking to staffers anyway, you're not going to be yeah, talking. You're not going to talk to the, um, to the guy, <laughs> but it's all Republicans around us. So what I told people, uh, to say is that, um, that we want, uh, to stop supporting the war for Al Qaeda in Yemen that that traitor Obama started. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if you have a Democrat that you're talking to, uh, something like, um, we want to, uh, to stop, uh, supporting 
Prince Bonesaw who killed that Washington Post reporter, especially when our real enemy is Russia, who stole the election from Hillary Clinton and put that bastard Trump in office. <laughs> so I figure one of these so, arguments so will work on either side. you're playing both sides of oh, the yeah. table. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Nice. Um, and <laughs> and uh, I, I told the Democrat one to a couple of Democrats, even though down here we don't talk to any Democrats. Yeah. Um, but one of them was like, wow, you packed a lot of grievances into that one sentence. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, man. <laughs> Something ought to, ought to trigger there. It's like, well, that's the goal. That's the goal. Yep. <laughs> so... Um, well, and what's going on in Yemen is a is a, a, tr- a true travesty. I mean, that's yeah. really as it, that that war is as nasty as anything. Yeah. I, it's the worst thing going on on the planet right now. Yeah, it, that I mean, I that one's a real genocide. Yeah, and I don't think that there's any, I don't think there's any argument to that. Like that, that's the worst thing, and you never hear about it. Like people who, I mean, most people who listen to this podcast, this is probably the only place they've heard about it. Yeah, for the most part, every now and then a little something here or there. Yeah, but um, unless you're also following like Scott Horton. Well, yeah, if you're following something like that, yeah. but n- uh, not if you're not following mainstream, like like you're not yeah. getting that on mainstream. Yeah, that's um, a, absolutely. And true. and it is the worst thing going on on the planet right now. Yeah. Um. Well, something like four hundred thousand people have died. Yeah. yeah. Um. It's like one hundred and fifty thousand directly as a result of the war, and like another. Um, quarter million, roughly, uh, as a in, from indirect effects of the war, yeah. um, disease and starvation. Well, and, and the stuff Saudis like that, so. are like literally going after infrastructure. Yeah, like, I mean, water treatment plants, yeah. things like that. Yeah, yeah, like it's 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 horrible, man. Yeah. So. Um, and the U.S. Navy is enforcing a, a blockade that's keeping food out of the country. Yeah. So. And we're refueling the te- the the jets and whatnot that's dropping the bombs. Yeah, and providing them intelligence data, which means we're telling them where these treatment plants are that they're dropping. So that the they can go. So drop it's, the bombs. it's 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 we're we're very involved in this, and yeah. it, it wouldn't be going on like we, it wouldn't be going on if we weren't involved. Mm-hmm. Like without our support, the Saudis couldn't pull this off. Yeah. And the only reason that we entered the war and or helped support the war in the first place was so that Obama could placate the Saudis after making the Iran nuclear deal, and we're not a part of the nuclear deal anymore anyway. Yeah. So. so what are we doing here, guys? Uh, unfortunately, I think right now the <coughs> the big issue is um, energy prices, and so that's why I think that Biden will probably uh, not sign it. Yeah. Um, if it goes to him. When it goes to him, I fully expect it to end up on his desk, actually. Yeah. Um, but uh, I expect him not to sign it because now he's trying to make good with the Saudis, make friends with the Saudis over oil. That's, I mean, that you're probably right about that. It's just, it seems crazy to me that you could have a Republican and a Democrat president not sign the same bill put yeah. in front of them um, for something that's so obviously. Uh, a, a, a waste pro- of resources. A waste of resources and just a just a horrible moral yeah. disaster. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah, it's it, it is certainly the worst thing that the U.S. is involved in, and that and that's, that's a high bar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I again one eight three three stop war um, and try and put an end to this thing. Yeah. Finally, do your part. Yeah. Um. Let's see. I I was going to piggyback something off of that, but now I forgot. I forgot what it was. <laughs> yeah. Uh so what do you want to what do you want to start with? I don't know, a lot going on in the Supreme Court. Yeah. Yeah. Um there's been a uh, several decisions that's come out. <laughs> uh of course the one that's gotten the most news is the Dobbs case that overturned Roe Roe versus Wade. Um and what you know? This is again. I I'm I'm so tired of talking about this in some ways. Yeah. But it it does it does um it is some fertile ground for some interesting discussion with people that are willing to discuss it and aren't like super yeah. passionate. What I've found is so many people are just so ingrained in their belief or mm-hmm. where they're at with it that they just don't want to hear an argument. Yeah. To to one side or the other. Well, um, um, and those, and you know, it's irritating, but like to me, those people, you just can't, there's no sense in having a conversation with them about it because if, if, if they're not going to at least be open to the arguments on either side, then there's, you know, you're not winning that. Yeah. Um, let's just go ahead and start with this clip from Elizabeth Warren. 
Um, and that'll give us a little jumping, uh, jumping off, off point. point. Yeah. All right. So, all right, cool. let's start with that. Getting mad over this. We have six extremist justices on the United States Supreme Court who have decided that their moral and religious views should be imposed on the rest of America. This is not what America wants. And in a democracy on this issue, the Supreme Court does not get the last word the people do. And we are going to fight back. We've got tools, we're going to use them. And in November, we're gonna make sure that we elect enough people who believe in that democracy that we can pass Roe versus Wade and make it the law of the land again. Only this time we'll do it by statute and enforce it. All right, there's a couple of interesting things in there. Um, like one of the first things that she said, well, she makes assumptions or actually she makes, they're more like accusations the way she presents it about their reasoning for uh, overturning Roe v. Wade, that it's their their moral and religious beliefs. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying that she's necessarily wrong. Yeah. Uh, but... And then she, the, but the but, part that gets if me. That was, that. If that was the case, though, the implication would be what they would have done. Like, if that was true, what she's saying, mm -hmm. then they would have just made it Ill abortions illegal across the board. Yeah. And, that, and that. that's not what they did. They well, just turned it over. Well, that's the other part of it, right? Yeah. Is that she says that, that they impose on the rest of us. But no, they, that's not at all what they did. Yeah. They, the they took the, away the imposition. Yeah, the imposition was, was the southern states not being able to do what they wanted to do. Yeah, um, and there's a whole lot of people complaining about this that are complaining from states that nothing's going to change. Yeah, it's going to, yeah. And that's, that's my whole, this, the reason I think this was a good decision mm -hmm. is because anytime you can get control back over down to the most local level, in this case, the states, that's a good thing. Um, I, I just, I, I, I certainly think that that's better. Um, I think that there is a case to make that there is a, a right to this, um, in a sense. Um, yeah. And I'll get to it later. I, this is actually one of the things with all these decisions that I kind of wanted to maybe try and bring together. But um, First, I wanted to kind of debunk a little bit of what she says here. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that, the, or actually reinforce some of the things that she says. Like one of the, she says, uh, the Supreme Court is not the final word on this. That's absolutely correct. Yeah. Um, and actually, this decision said that the Supreme Court isn't the final word on it. That was the yeah, decision. That was the is, decision, yeah. But generally speaking as well, like the Supreme Court isn't supposed to be um, a, a group of nine oligarchs that rule over us all with their decisions. It, yeah. And and one of the things that we, we try and emphasize on this podcast, although I'm sure that we mess it up like everybody else, is that the Supreme Court doesn't issue rulings. They yeah. issue opinions. Well, and that's something I'm glad you mentioned that because this week in, in the news, I've heard the word opinions used more than ever. Normally yeah. they say rulings just like what you're saying. Mm -hmm. But this week... They have been issuing opinions all of a sudden when it hasn't been more left wing. Exactly. Decisions. There's there's yeah. a there's a yeah exactly. There's a big distinction there. Yeah. Um, I just got a kick out of it every time I hear it. But I'd make a note of it every time I heard it. I was like, that was opinions and not rulings. Like, yeah, that's interesting. I I don't really I don't listen to mainstream media enough to notice. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I didn't notice it in what people wrote about yeah. these things. Um, so. That's int I'll, I'll pay more attention though now. Yeah, take, listen out because it's definitely there. <laughs> um, and then I did, there was, I almost uh, ended the clip there, but I did want to include her part where she talks about what this is really about, um, which is uh, using this to get Democrats out to the polls in November to elect more Democrats. And yep. that's why she says that they're imposing <laughs> these decisions, these rulings, whatever, these opinions on the rest of us, their yeah. moral and whatever justification on the rest of us, um, even though that's not true. And yeah. she knows that that's not oh, true. She, yeah. Isn't she an attorney? 
Yes. I thought so. I'm pretty sure. She knows, yeah. 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 I think she's a constitutional attorney. Isn't that what she she taught at Harvard or whatever? Anyway. That would make sense. Or constitutional law. The the worst ones on the Constitution usually are constitutional attorneys. So that would make nothing but sense. The constitutional lawyer. Yep. Um, Well, because what a constitutional lawyer does is learn how to get around the Constitution. Yeah. Yeah. That's... Gives why they're the worst ones on the Constitution. Yeah. (laughs) Um, so that's really what it's about. This is, uh, to motivate people for elections. And, and it, it kind of amazes me that, I mean, do you, do you think that the women in California, um, so firmly believe that the women of Alabama are being oppressed by the state of Alabama, that they're willing to fight over, the right of a woman in Alabama to get an abortion in Alabama instead of traveling to wherever, wherever yeah, um, to to get it done. Or do you think that they that they don't understand what this is about and believe that abortion is being taken away from everyone everywhere? Or do you think that they actually believe that all women in Alabama believe like them? Because <laughs> I've been asking a lot of people what they thought of this yeah. and and what they think of abortion generally. And most people um, believe in some kind of reasonable restriction. Yeah. Um, you know, the, after the first trimester or something like that, that it shouldn't be allowed yeah. um, and so forth. Like, but that, That's where most of the people I talk to land. Mm-hmm. Um, that while they would consider themselves pro-life, um, like I said, they would be, they would compromise something around the first trimester. Yeah. And... I do think that they might be surprised at the number of women in conservative areas of the country that actually believe that abortion is a real moral. Well, one problem. of the justices on this was a woman. Yeah, well, yeah, but she's <laughs> but she's Catholic, <laughs> right? Oh, is that okay? <laughs> well, okay. She even went to Notre Dame. Oh yeah, I forgot about all Amy Coney Barrett. Uh, yeah. yeah, I forgot about that. Um, so I don't know, and then a lot of it is fear mongering about what happens next. Yeah. Well, that's the big thing um, I've seen. It's, it's yeah. like now they're now they're going to get rid of gay marriage and um, and contraceptives and all kinds of stuff, which I, I just don't see happening. I mean, I suppose yeah. it's possible, and I'm going to fear monger a little bit here too because uh, I do have some concerns about this case, um, like future implications. Because as I was reading through, trying to uh, here, that's another point. Um, anybody who has a good recommendation for some place that I can go for legal analysis, like good, good, solid. Yeah. yeah. Like factually based. Um, I can't say unbiased cause every, everybody's biased in one way or another, but, yeah. um, but very, uh, like plain factually based legal analysis of this kind of thing, please send it to me, Michael at the Liberty Mike.com. Because as I was going through all this stuff over the last week, um, I was realizing that I don't have a good place that I can go when I'm not understanding Okay. Like the, the roots lingo, of yeah. yeah of what's going on in some of these decisions <laughs> um, that I I can go to and and read somebody else translate <laughs> for yeah, me yeah. Um, so like I've been reading through these decisions um, the and I and I mostly understand the basics but there's you know all those um, where to fours and the weird lawyerly language that also comes up and then they reference cases that I don't recognize and I don't have time to look everything yeah, up and you, gotta, you know. Yeah. So anyway, if if you have if you have come across a really good um, site for legal analysis of Supreme Court decisions, please send it to me. I would really appreciate it. That would save me a ton of time yeah. and probably a ton of confusion as well. Yeah. But um, but the Roe case was before HIPAA. Um, the initial Roe case was before HIPAA, and what it did was it like it guaranteed or it codified in a lot of ways. I mean, what they, uh, like a lot of what they rested it on was the, um, the doctor patient privacy relationship. Yeah. Right. Like that's really what, what Roe made its decision on. Um, and by overturning that, it seems to me that it opens the door because in this decision, like one of the things that they said, um, is that the, that this isn't at the federal level, but that the states can make their own decisions for their population on healthcare issues. Yeah. Well, that frightens me, especially after the last two years. Yeah, after what we've seen 
Yeah. So, which a lot of that stuff was rammed down our throats with HIPAA and everything else. Well, that's true. Um, and of course, like HIPAA, you know, it wasn't that long. I was talking with, with my mom the other night and, um, like, remember during the Obama administration, there was a big push to give the federal government access to your private health care records. Yeah. Um, and it got overturned. And I, and I, 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 recognize that it got overturned but it doesn't go away yeah like that's one of those things that they would love to have access to just more information about you and of course the truth is the nsa already has access to it but um because they track everything that goes over the internet and all your healthcare records are on the internet at this point i (laughs) promise you but um this is something that'll continue to come up whenever it's there seems to be a convenient crisis to bring it up and i'm a little surprised that it didn't come up during covid um well, they just completely sidestepped it with the well, that's mandates, true. with the vaccine mandates. Like, yeah, by requiring you to show paperwork. But again, that's a that to me is a violation of HIPAA. Well, that's in a lot of that's ways. my but, point. Is is that yeah that that whole situation was a violation of HIPAA. Like, my employer shouldn't have any right to ask me about my vaccination status. Yeah. Like, I mean, and under HIPAA, that HIPAA should protect that. Yeah. But it didn't in this scenario. Yeah. They completely just glossed over that. I mean, well, there are already obviously some carve outs because you have to show um, vaccinations for kids going into public schools to and so forth. Schools. Yeah. Um, I, so. Anyway, uh, th- th- it does concern me a little bit that they, um, that they tore down this uh, federal level protection for, of healthcare privacy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't know where that's going from here. No. Uh, but it seems to me, but that it does open the door for States to impose mask mandates and lockdowns and even inoculations. Mm. Um, yeah. Without, uh, without anything at the federal level to say that they can't. Yeah. Right. So, um, and so let's start bringing some of these other things in because I, I think the real discussion is when you kind of look at it <coughs> holistically. Uh, so then there was the um, the other real big one that people have been talking about, of course, is the New York firearms restrictions overturned. Yeah. Um, Which this one's close to my heart. Yeah. Like I, I mean, so it's not, a, it's not a direct issue for us down south because – I mean, it's we don't have these type of restrictions, but up north, um, particularly New York, you couldn't get a carry permit. Like they just, it wasn't that they didn't have a process; they just didn't issue the permits. Um, and so, basically, what this ruling does is says no. Like you have to, you have to be able to issue the permits. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and this is a actually like a really common legal trick for governments that to require a license in order to do something and then just and never just issue any licenses for like never have a good enough reason to issue a license. Yeah. I mean that's how uh that's how marijuana was made illegal. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Um it was that uh in order to um um I guess in order to sell initially. Yeah. You had to have a license to do it and they just wouldn't listen. Just don't, don't would never issue, issue a license. Yeah. Um, Is that why Old Miss had the only, le- at one point, the only legal place to grow it? Because they issued them a license to grow it? Yeah, I suppose so. The, to yeah. do research, yeah. To do research, yeah. Yeah. Um, oops, I forgot to turn the volume down on that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but, the and so then, of course, there's been some questions that have arisen with these two cases coming out back to back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, because this is a conversation I've had with a lot of people about. So in the Roe case, it was like, all right, well, the states have the right to make these decisions and this is a state's right thing. Mm-hmm. But then you come right behind it with the gun thing and it's like, well, but you can't do this. Like you, the mm-hmm. states can, don't have control over this. So you're giving states control over one and you're pulling control over another. Yeah. Now I and the gun thing came first, actually. The gun thing actually did come first, which I thought was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I was more excited about that than the row thing. Yeah. And it, like I say, it doesn't affect me, but it was still nice to know that people are going to get to exercise their rights again. Mm-hmm. Um, but to me, the two make perfect sense together because in my mind, the the Second Amendment protects your right to keep and bear arms. Mm-hmm. So the the your state government shouldn't have a right to take that constitutionally right away. 
Yeah, um, there is some interesting nuance in the case, um, which is that they they overturned the uh, the New York firearms restrictions um, sp- specifically for self defense for law abiding individuals, yeah. uh, because in in the case the the people had given self defense as their reason for wanting to have a firearms license and it was denied. And uh, the right to self-defense is absolutely codified in plain language in the Second Amendment. Yeah. Um, And that's kind of the difference, is that the the right to terminate a pregnancy is Is not not specifically codified. Now, here's where... Here's where I think that and we if, can have. And some if Elizabeth Warren wants to to give people that right, to me, that's not through legislation to give mm-hmm. them that right. She needs to go through the Constitution. Well, here's the thing: it may already be there. Okay. Um, because the Ninth Amendment says that this list of rights that we have we have stated here mm-hmm. is not an exclusive list. Ah. Okay. Right. Like the Ninth okay. Amendment is about saying that because there was concern um, from the founders that the Bill of Rights would be used as uh, in these are the only rights you have. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. As a restrictive list instead of an inclusive list. Yeah. Right. Um, so if it's not in the Constitution specifically, then it's not a right. Yeah. And so the Ninth Amendment says that this is not to be taken as the only rights that people that have exist, yeah um and then of course 10th amendment says that if it's not if it's not a power yeah. specifically granted to the u.s government it goes to the the state governments yeah it it the 10th amendment isn't actually about about rights yeah at all <laughs> yeah um it's about uh it's about authority yeah and who has it right yeah um so i, I think that you could make a case on the on the back of row under the Fourth Amendment, yeah, um, for a right to an abortion, just in the sense that um, you have the right to privacy, yeah, yeah, and so it so, uh, you have the right to privacy and to do to your body what you wish. Would well, that be the argument that that it's that what your <coughs> that your medical decisions are nobody's business but your own and your doctor's? Yeah. That's what the argument would would really be. Yeah, Is, and it's not to say that it would expressly give you the right to abortion, it would just expressly say that you don't have to tell anybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so it, yeah. it by default, well, I guess... Interpreting uh, it. Though. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 what it would do is it wouldn't exactly legalize abortion. It would just make it that it was not a criminal not, act. Not prosecutable. Right. Because that's really what you're talking yeah. about. It's not, it, it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be prosecutable. Because right. you wouldn't, because yeah, I'm trying to hash this out in my head, but you wouldn't, know, mm-hmm. you you wouldn't be able to have a witness to testify against you, right? Because because you, you got Fifth Amendment, because uh, only people involved would be people that would have to, um, yeah, uh, have to uh, incriminate themselves. Incriminate themselves. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, it's an interesting legal theory. <laughs> well, I, I think that there's a better case to be made. Uh, for a, a legal right to an abortion under the Ninth and Fourth Amendments. Yeah. Um, then still, though, I don't... So the question becomes, like, the right to self-defense is specifically in there. Yeah. And abortion um, is you, about two different rights that are mutually exclusive, essentially. And it depends on... And, and it comes back to where you think life begins again. Yeah. Because there's the right to bodily autonomy. Yeah. And there's the right to life. Yeah. And these two are in di- direct conflict with each other. Right. In when this particular case. Yeah. 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 Um, <coughs> and which one you think is the the one that matters depends on when you think life begins. Yeah. And that's... Uh, and science still hasn't defined life. Yeah. <laughs> Not yeah. specifically. I mean, it's life as we know it here on Earth. But like if we were to discover life on some other planet, we may not even recognize it as life. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Or we may recognize it as life and then realize that it doesn't fit our definition and <laughs> have to <laughs> right. redefine life. And um, this has always been my, my case against uh, abortion being a legal matter at all is that I don't that that's what it hinges on 
yeah. is your definition of life. And I don't want government defining life. Well, and that's where and that's where I'm at. Even as a pro life person, I I still have a problem with government being the arm here yeah. that, that enforces this and makes the definitions. Yeah. Like I have a problem with that. Mm-hmm. Like and as as much as I I do believe that at at some point down that line, that's a baby in there. Mm-hmm. It, I still don't want the government drawing that line. Yeah. Um, any line between conception and birth is necessarily arbitrary. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. And um, now all that said, uh, I, I do, I would rather authority on the matter be decentralized. So I prefer that the question go to the states than rather than well, be handled at the federal level. But um, I don't think that the question – I don't think it's a political question. I think it's a medical question. Yeah, I, I or, agree. Or a biological question. <laughs> well, and I just – at the root of it, I think that, that the states are best equipped to do what's right for their state. And – I, you know, I just, I, I think that that's, at the end of the day, that makes the most sense as mm-hmm. far as trying to hash this problem out. Because it's a problem. Like, I mean, w- regardless of which side of the stick you're on, mm-hmm. like, it's, it's, there's no clear answers here. Well, and it, from my perspective, it's better for individuals. It's easier for individuals to defend themselves against the state than against the federal government yeah. um, through various methods. So first off, your vote has a has more power at the state level than it has at the federal level. Yeah. Um, and secondly, it's a whole lot easier if you're really dissatisfied with your state to move to another state than it is to leave the country. Yeah, exactly. Um, so... And the, you know, the truth is that I don't, and I could be wrong about this, so, you know, somebody can double check me, but I'm pretty sure that there isn't a state that has outlawed abortion at this point that isn't adjacent to a state that has not. Ooh, I don't know. I know there's been a lot of talk on the news um, just about the burden of people having to travel from state to state. And there's been a lot of individual stories on the news of, well, this person would have to go this far to get their abortion and blah, 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 blah. Like that kind of thing. Well, you know. But I mean, it's, <laughs> to me, it's what's, uh, so something else I think that at least in reference to this is worth at least mentioning. I think mm-hmm. I may have mentioned it before when it first came up, but a bunch of companies have came out now and said that they're going to um, actually offer transportation, offer transportation and pay yeah. to go travel to another state. You know why they're doing that? Why? I want to hear your, your explanation. My, all right. This is my assumption on this. Yeah. My assumption is that it's cheaper for them to do that than to pay for maternity leave. Yeah. Well, okay. So you're exactly where I'm at. So yeah, I mean, it makes more, and it makes more sense because they get them back. Yeah. It makes mm-hmm. perfect sense for, yeah. But, it is less costly for these businesses to provide an abortion than to uh, pay maternity leave. Yeah. And uh, it, the costs related to maternity leave, which is also like paying somebody else to do the same job that you're paying somebody yeah. that's sitting at home. It's just an icky, creepy thing to me to know that yeah. companies are out there doing that. Um, I mean, that's it's to me, it's no, it's no separation there between just paying you to get rid of a baby. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, I mean like, Oh, you know, uh, that's like, that's like you <laughs> this go is to your an boss impediment and, to all of us. So let's, yeah, let's <laughs> just know? do it. Like, it's yeah. just, Oh, it's so icky and creepy, man. Yeah. It, yeah. It's weird, but, um, yeah, it's the world we live in. Like yeah. that, that is where we're at. Hey, there, there you go. There's your, uh, there's the benefits of a profit driven business to all you lefties out there. <laughs> right. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Um, the, uh, another of the big cases, if we're ready to move Yeah, on, yeah, then, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so. Um, actually, I did kind of want to, sp- maybe we'll come back to it. Anyway, um, a- another one of the big cases was the Kennedy case about the coach leading prayers on the 50 yard line. Yeah. Um, they got fired for that. <coughs> I, um, so it, in the first amendment, um, it is the, it says that the state will not establish a religion or um, interfere with the free exercise. Yeah. Right. So this one, to me, seemed like a really People, clear-cut case. Me too. 
but people conflate this, um, mm-hmm. at least in my experience. The people yeah. I've talked to will be like, well, there's supposed to be separation of church and state. Yeah, and, I hear and that they, too. they make that argument like mm-hmm. so passionately. Um, and my thing is, is yeah, but you still have a, there's a difference between a coach having a prayer with some of his players mm-hmm. and those players having every right to not participate in that prayer. Right. Um, there's a difference between that and then having textbooks that have prayers in the textbook. Mm-hmm. Like that would be the state with pushing and pushing a uh, religion. Mm-hmm. But a coach making the decision to do something with his players is to me complete. These are different things. Am I wrong? Oh yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Um, this is him having a voluntary to participate in prayer um, is not no an establishment of a state religion. Besides exactly. the fact that a coach a, fo- a football coach at a, at a public high school does not have the power to establish a state religion. <laughs> right. Um, th- this well, is really a question this, of— This one comes up over and over because, yeah. like, I know a lot of times the valedictorians and stuff will say something, and mm-hmm. then it gets construed in this whole big thing. And it's yeah. like, you, have, you still have a right as an individual to say something. Yeah. Well, it, this, is a, this is about, uh, I think, a misunderstanding— um, of what the constitution is saying. This is about a freedom of religion, not from religion. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So, you know, there's a lot of Christianity in uh, various things that the federal government does, but they're not imposing that religion on everybody else. Yeah. Right. Like, I mean, there are prayers <laughs> said at all kinds of, of in God federal... we trust is on the money. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't say which God. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, there you go. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and and, they, and were, you have the right to, to get rid of that money and give it to me. I'm yeah. just saying. I'll take uh, it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we they they were trying to to prohibit um, the establishment of a state church of a national like, religion. Yeah, uh, of the Church of England. Yeah, exactly. That's what they were trying to avoid. Yeah. Um, and so the the separation of church and state isn't to say that there is no religion in the state. It's to say that the church doesn't rule the state. Yeah. That the church doesn't issue issue judgments that on behalf of the state doesn't act like a state. We don't have yeah. we don't have a papacy here. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I've always thought those arguments were just way overblown and just just irritating yeah. to me. As long as it's voluntary. It, I, see I just no don't problem. see an issue. No, I would have an issue if, if that coach was like, no, this is what y'all will do. Y'all yeah, will if participate. you don't come pray with me, then you're not playing next yeah, week. Yeah, no, I have a problem with that. Yeah, absolutely. You know? and, and I think that... I still don't think it qualifies as the establishment of a religion, but I do no, agree that that's stepping not. past the line. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, That's all I really have about that one. I, to yeah. me, that one was pretty cut and dried. I just don't... Yeah, I mean, see I, the I thought it was a good decision as well, but like I say, a lot of pushback on that. Just people I've talked with. Um, and then uh, the the last one, and I, I don't have a lot to say about this one either. The last big one was the um, EPA decision. Oh yeah, uh, that limits the authority of the EPA um, with regard to the Clean Air Act. Well, I will say this: I'm I'm a car guy. A lot of car groups. Um, a lot of the car community was really happy about this decision. Um, and because I tried of emissions to, testing or something? Or what? Something to do with the emissions testing. And apparently the EPA has been pushing some kind of legislation against like altering your vehicles like no. for like hot rods and stuff like that. Okay. And um, I don't think it's been – it hasn't been reported on a lot, and I hadn't been able to find a lot of information other than just talking to guys in these car groups. Mm-hmm. But um, – this is something that they were very excited about. That this this ruling in all of my car groups, people were like over the moon. Well, this, I know more about this on a macro scale than that. All right. <laughs> um, the the decision was a really about whether the uh, the EPA had expanded its authority um, under the the um, under the provisions that were given to it by the legislation. Yeah. Um, so it's. It's really about uh, they were to limit emissions on a site by site basis. That was the that was the the mandate, or I guess, the, or the the task that was given to them. Yeah. So um, what they were supposed to do was to go to various energy producing sites and say, "All right, this is what you're doing. This is the technology that's available to help you reduce your emissions at this site." 
um, this is a reasonable um, uh, time period and cost needed to do these things to reduce your emissions at this site to this level by this time and we'll be back to check yeah <laughs> i mean that's kind of that's what, they what were supposed that's to what do. it is yeah um they kind of uh, reinterpreted that into uh this very large scale shift in how energy would be produced in this country really? so instead of um going from site to site they were looking at it as a as a kind of an evolution in energy production in this country to say, okay, um, if we reduce the number of coal sites by this, if we get more of our energy from natural gas than from coal, that will reduce emissions because natural gas burns cleaner than coal. Mm -hmm. And if we um, if we convert, you know, some amount of our energy production uh, from you know, from these fuels into renewable fuels like solar and wind, that will also reduce our emissions by this amount. And so they were putting emission standards out there uh, based on these kind of calculations yeah. over the entire group of energy producers that would um, essentially prohibit like coal plants from even functioning because there's <laughs> no way they could ever meet those emission those, standards. Yeah, meet those qualifications. And so they were using their authority rather than to uh, improve individual sites like they were intended um, to shift energy production into a, a, a less polluting um, total really? <laughs> uh, across the nation. Like essentially they were using their power to um, impose changes on the market yeah that the market, for energy yeah yeah um like that's, that's sea just, changes that, on the market yeah, and, that and like energy. that just has a recipe for disaster right yeah there. so they were uh, they were using their authority to take control over the energy market and to shift energy production in this country in a way that they wanted it to Real. be done um like the sources of energy yeah and uh and that was deemed to be out of bounds and not in um in keeping with what they were uh designated or created or permitted even to do by the legislation that created them well yeah and that's been my issue with the epa from the word go is that this this agency has been created and now it just makes declarations yeah based off whatever it wants to. Yeah. Um, and, and that's not like, that's not, I mean, say what you will about democracy, but that's not democracy. <laughs> like, yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, so I, I think that, I think that that's a good decision based on what I was able to, yeah. to, well, to suss out of it. Um, and I wish they would do that with more government agencies to have done similar kinds of things. Yeah. Well, maybe they will in the future. Maybe this yeah. will be the catalyst to reel some of that, you know, bureaucracy in. Mm -hmm. So, um, we're actually running kind of low on time. So, uh, you want to just jump to, uh, January 6th? Yeah. I don't know that I've got a whole lot to say about January 6th. Yeah. I, I think the, the simplest thing is, to say is that if, if, <laughs> a few hundred of, and I'll say mostly unarmed protesters, because there were like three yeah. arrests or well, something like that for firearms. Yeah. Um, one of which actually took a firearm into the Capitol. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I, I know. I can't even so, like... So uh, several hundred people with one gun... <laughs> right. um, if, if it's like the worst insurrection <laughs> I, I ever, know, man. I know. If several hundred people with one gun uh, threatened to overthrow the government... Um, with the <laughs> largest and best equipped military force in the history of the world. Oh man. <laughs> then we've got some other kinds of problems. Man, I just and when you say in that just in my head I picture like this mob of people with one guy with an assault rifle <laughs> like leading yeah. them in. <laughs> yeah, know? and the rest like, of them with pitchforks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. Um <laughs> so it's also yeah. like there okay, so there are thousands of people at the rally. And there were a thousand people, you know, a couple thousand people around the Capitol. Yeah. And then I can't get good numbers on how many people went in. There were like 75 arrests for entering or something like that. But yeah. um, say a few hundred. I think that that's fair. Well, they didn't arrest any of the feds that went in. So oh, you, yeah. got, you got to keep that. That's, in. Yeah, that's true. Don't, don't forget about um, that. <laughs> so I'm guessing there were like a few hundred people that actually entered, entered the Capitol. Yeah. Uh, there's nearly 2,000 Capitol Police. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, and I think that that's an underestimate actually, because the, that, 
<laughs> this is the most recent number I could find was something like uh, uh, 1,800 officers yeah. in the Capitol Police. Um, but I fa- also came across an article from 2016 talking about how there were already – that there were um, close to 2,000 Capitol Police at that time, and it was the fastest growing and biggest budgeted police force really? or law enforcement agency um, in the U.S. that nobody wow. had heard of. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, so I have a hard time imagining if they were the fastest growing and biggest budgeted police force in 2016 that they haven't expanded their numbers yeah. in the five years since then. But All right. who knows? Uh, yeah. Who COVID knows? may have had an effect on that. That's, they may that's have, true. Yeah. That's true. Um, and people are leaving the profession pretty in droves. So. Yeah, that's true. Um, so who really knows? But it, it's hard to say. So yeah. we we can guess that there's at least like eighteen hundred officers though on that in the yeah. Capitol Police Force. Yeah. Um, plus they had uh, backup from uh, National Guard on January sixth. Did they not? I thought they or did. Th- they were late bringing them in though. Was my was what yeah. I thought I had my, was my understanding of the situation. Mm-hmm. Um, at because any rate, they were just not prepared. <laughs> At any rate, this wasn't a big threat to democracy. This is no. not, this was never something that was going to bring down the government of the United States. Any any talk like that is just absurd. Constitutional um, crisis. <laughs> yeah, it, it's so hyperbolic that I it's hard to imagine. And then um, these hearings, uh, I haven't watched them. Um, I I've, have just uh, I've done highlights and clips clip notes, and stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what I've been doing. But I like to what? watch these kind of type of things generally, but this one I just haven't gotten into. You know, what I keep thinking of though is uh, the Simpsons episode um, where Homer takes the babysitter home, and there's the gummy Venus de Milo, and it's stuck to her butt. And he pulls it off of her butt and she accuses him of sexual assault. And they do this like lifetime movie about her sexual (laughs) assault from Homer. And it's like this really like over the top portrayal of Homer, the the predator and so forth. That's what I keep thinking. Yeah. Um, Is that it's. This is not a trial. And I I think that maybe I I hope that our listeners understand that, that this is in no way a trial, that this is a story that's being told to perpetuate a particular narrative. And it is not two sided in any way. No, no. I mean, if this was a real investigation, really trying to get to the bottom of what happened that day, Mm -hmm. there would be more talk of the feds that were on the ground that day. Yeah. And that's that hasn't been brought up in Congress at all. Other than Thomas Massey, he did mm-hmm. bring it up. I, I saw a snippet where he had um, done a big dialogue on it. Yeah. Um, but he's the only one. And there was nobody following up like, oh, well, maybe this is something to get to the bottom of. Mm-hmm. Um, it's all one-sided. It's all Trump's the bad guy. And and like I say, not that I'm a Trump fan, obviously, but I mean, come on, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the, um, the Capitol Sergeant at Arms, uh, whose name I forget um, right now, um, who was going to testify died before his testimony. Yes, he did, like days before. Yeah, um, and he was somebody who said that he believed that there were um, what how, agitators. Gosh, yeah, professional agitators. Yeah, yeah. Um, in the crowd. So yeah, uh, but that won't come out in this thing either. No, and, and that's to me. If there's any story here, like mm-hmm. that's where the story is at. Um, that's just me. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I got a kick out of the whole, um, Trump wanting to let the guys in with guns to pull the mags, the magnetic bars. Did you hear about that? Uh, yeah. I, I didn't understand what the mags was. Mag, so mags. Okay, I was, was like, what the mags? Yeah. Cause when the first time I heard it, I was like, what is she thought? Magazines? Like what, the, what yeah. is that? What are they talking about? No, the mags are, um, are the magnetic devices that, so he, what he wanted them to do was take away the magnetic devices. So they would just let anybody in, whether they had were armed or not. Okay. And of course the secret service is having no part of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that was what he was pushing them to do. He was let my people in like you into know, the Capitol or into the rally, into the Capitol. Oh no. Oh. Into the rally. Okay. Yeah. And just, no, that's that is so, and that's maybe another where people are misinterpreting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was referring to that. That was him referring to, that want them wanting to come see him at the rally he was holding. Mm-hmm. So those people were already there anyway. Anybody that 
you know, they had guns there anyway. Yeah. Um, but he wanted them at the rally because he didn't feel like the... They weren't they there were, to hurt him. They weren't, yeah. Well, he said that. He was like, these are my people. They're not going to hurt me. Um, and that he um, he didn't feel like there was enough... He, well, <laughs> that, this guy that's is, so naive, too, dude, though. Oh, I mean, it is. Like, the, incredibly... The, you, I mean, look at who you're dealing with. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but that was his thing, was he didn't feel like there were going to be enough people at his rally. Mm -hmm. And so he wants... Because, you know, he's always about oh, the, yeah. the numbers. Like, I got to show how popular yeah. I am. And so he wanted as many yeah. people at the rally as he could, and he felt like removing the, the mags would do that, would allow more people to be there. Okay. So, That's interesting. I don't know. Yeah, it, I, I, it, was, it came out in the thing. I thought it was interesting, but still, like, this is all, like, it. This is ridiculous. Like, I can't yeah. get over it. Um, I heard a little bit of the Cassidy, whatever her name was, uh, yeah. presentation. Yeah, that's where that came from. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to call it testimony. It's a presentation. <laughs> presentation, yeah. Um, and, uh, <laughs> like, there was a, there were a couple of parts where I was like, okay, wait, like, how does she have this information? Like, she witnessed this? She heard this? No. And I backed it up and, like, listened again. And she's like, everything she's that she says... She's repeating or what she... From other people. It's something all Something somebody else said to her. It's all hearsay. Yeah. Which, by the way, you can't do in court. Yeah. <laughs> they do not allow hearsay in court. <laughs> yeah. So, anybody that watched the Johnny Depp trial knows this, like, intimately. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so it, like, she wasn't even telling her story. No. Um, and, and if this was, so if this was actually a court proceeding where they were actually like a criminal court, mm -hmm. um, they would, this person never would have even testified. It would have been, well, all right, we need to hear from those individuals. We need to subpoena those people and they need to come tell the story. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is, this is all could be made up. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it is, it, it, you know, I don't know one way or the other, but I mean, it definitely could be. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I think the whole thing's absurd. Uh, I think it's counterproductive for the Democrats. You do wonder a little bit if the abortion thing um, will work for them. Gives them a bump. Yeah, but I don't know that it will through November, even if it does now. And one of the interesting, like on the political side well, of this, one of the interesting things that I heard um, is that they are very concerned because a new poll came out about um, Biden's approval ratings. And of course, they're in the tank. They're like oh, 30, yeah. 33, 34%, somewhere in there. I can't remember yeah. overall approval rating. Um, but he only has a 25% approval rating among Hispanics. And so they're freaking oh, out yeah. about that because yeah. like the Democrats say, well, we can't win an election with only 25% of the Hispanic vote. Yeah. And, um, and I thought, well, the, then they're definitely pushing the wrong thing, it seems to me, because most of the Hispanics in this country are Catholic. And yeah. I can't imagine that a vast majority of them yeah. are on board with well, abortion. <laughs> this is something that I've heard for a super long time, is that the Hispanics have always voted with the Democrats because of the immigration issue. Mm -hmm. But that's really the only issue that they align with the Democrats on. Because yeah. just like what you're saying, like most of them are Catholic, and they tend to be more conservative. Mm -hmm. So this whole idea that I mean that could be a block that's definitely on the table at some point yeah. and, and this could be the catalyst for that shift yeah like get those guys in the libertarian party yeah right <laughs> I don't know how libertarian they are but uh, you know who knows yeah um, I, how could they not be how could anybody not be seriously that's what I say yeah <laughs> I have everybody's politics. What hey, are you man. talking about? <laughs> uh, minimum wage laws just keep them out of work. That's why they get paid illegally. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> Start making these arguments Somebody, all day. See, this is why I could never run for office again. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's going to pull that clip out of context. Oh, okay. yeah. Um, <laughs> and I'll explain exactly what I meant. There you go. <laughs> so I stand behind that I stand statement. behind that statement all day long. <laughs> hey, man, I'm trying to get rid of these restrictions so they can all work. Yep. Um, I want everybody to work. <laughs> Uh, anything else or you no. want to go back to anything? No. Um, I mean, we can always, uh, if we're going to close it out, we can go back to where we started. Yeah. Well, I intend to. With Yemen. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Well, uh, again, everybody, uh, one, eight, three, three stop war. Um, you do have some time on this, but I wouldn't wait too long. Yeah. Uh, cause you know, it has been introduced in the house. They haven't really done any action on it, yeah. but, um, you know, a, a lot of people in the biz, I guess, in the political business, yeah. um, say that those phone calls make a difference. Yeah. 
Especially like if they're when getting it, inundated with phone calls about a particular issue. It helps. It yeah, it, it can yeah. definitely and this is, make this a is something where you as an individual can make an impact here. Mm-hmm. Like if everybody does this, like it will make an impact. Yeah. Um and it's and in an Im- impact on to me what should be the biggest headline and subject there is. Yeah. Like this should be the biggest news in the planet right now. Mm-hmm. And it's not even being talked about. Well, I, I do think that the biggest news on the planet should be the Ukraine thing. Cause that one has the potential to become well, nuclear and that's, yeah. that's a bigger deal, but we'll one problem at a time. Sorry. Yeah. Like yeah, well, right. <laughs> right now we have an opportunity to put it into this. Yeah. And when we get rid of, when we stop the war in Yemen, then we can start pushing for Ukraine or yeah. Somalia or Syria or Mali or any of these <laughs> other places that we're involved that we shouldn't be. All right. Um, well, as far as body count though, I think, um, Yemen's got it. Yeah. I, mean, I think so too. Yeah, um, yeah. This has certainly been the most devastating on a civilian population so yeah, far. Absolutely. So, um, so yeah, do your part. I mean, I, I, I hope that even if you came to this podcast being um, a hawk, yeah, just call hawk, it what it is, yeah, man. being a hawk that uh, that you've listened to us long enough to. Certainly. And even if you are a hawk, the Yemen thing is there's, there's no hawk position on that because if there was, it would be like Ukraine. They would be talking about it and it would be in the news. The reason this isn't in the news is because it's an embarrassment. Everybody knows that this is a, this is just disgusting. Yeah. Like there's, there's no good argument for it. And that's Mm -hmm. the reason you don't hear about it is because there's no justification for it. Yeah. No good justification. That, that you can wrap, no way to spin it. At least Ukraine, they're spinning. Yeah. You know, they can't, there's no spin in this. So. Oh, um, by the way, on the Ukraine thing, you may have heard about the shopping mall. I they, did. they got bombed by the Russians and there were thousands of people hiding inside and they had well, I, 16 casualties. Um, <coughs> was it a mall or was it something else? I thought I heard it was something. Well, I think originally it was a kindergarten. Okay, <laughs> but I, cause, I cause no, swore it, it was something else. Yeah, okay. no, it was a mall. So it was a mall. Um, okay, and it—it uh, it seems to me actually there's a little bit more to talk about here. Um, I guess we're not ending the podcast. All right, here we go. <laughs> uh, uh, there was a machine shop right next to the uh, the mall. Yeah. Um, with rail access and so forth. Ah. Uh, the Russians say that they bombed the machine shop because that's where um, heavy weapons were being um, prepared to move to the front. Yeah. Um, and it the some analysis that I um, was reading was talking about how it appears that that is in fact what was going on yeah. um that the that they bombed they the moving. machine shop yeah. and secondary explosions caught the mall on fire and the reason there were so few casualties in the mall is because there weren't thousands of civilians hiding in the mall or shopping in the mall or yeah. anything else um that it was probably the people that were injured were uh workers for the from the factory and or from the machine shop and soldiers ah um, also, uh, from the, the brilliant minds on the internet that like to dig into this kind of thing, um, the, uh, uh, report, uh, I saw a report from, you know, I don't know, random person really, but it was a, it was a comment on a blog that I trust yeah. and the, the comments are usually like pretty, pretty solid. Accurate, yeah. yeah. Um, was saying that people had dug into, <laughs> uh, the mall because, like everything else on the internet, um, people can you know, do their ratings. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Good or bad. And like make comments and, yeah. and, uh, complain mostly about places. One star on the would internet. not go again. Yeah. Um, and that all, uh, comments on the mall stopped in February, nah. um, when this thing started. So yeah. it seems that the mall itself has actually been shut down yeah. since February. Yeah. Um, which would jive with what the Russians are saying. Yeah. So, so probably not an attack on civilians again yeah. in Ukraine. Another yeah. another lie about uh, attack on civilians. Yeah. Um, also, uh, I wish I'd brought. Oh, actually, I can I can pull it up. I think. Hang on. Um, this is from Moon of Alabama, which I like. I use this blog constantly. I, I had uh, some issues with him on the COVID stuff because he was kind of all in on that, and I, I certainly had some disagreements. Um, with his analysis on some of the things that were going on with COVID. But um, let's see, moonofalabama.org. 
he's always been very good on international relations and war stuff, and he's been very good on the Ukraine, uh, Russia um, stuff for analysis. And there was this bit in here um, that I, th I found really interesting. Um, let me see if I can find it again. Um, all right, yeah. Neither of the big or small modern weapons that were given to Ukraine has made a difference. The Javelins had empty batteries. The British in-law anti-tank weapons were too weak to defeat Russian armor. Switchblade suicide drones are not controllable under Russian electronic warfare conditions. Stinger missiles have heat sensors that are too slow to acquire a fast-moving target. And the light howitzer M777 are too light for real battle conditions and tend to break. Yeah. So that's all the stuff we've spent the billions of dollars on sending over there. Yeah. Um, and he says, uh, you know, when's the last time the NATO units are trained under electronic warfare conditions? Um, and then he quotes some Ukrainian troops. Uh, actually, I think this, this came from the New York Times. But anyway, um, and they're saying the biggest issue that they've had is that they didn't have uh, enough communications gear. And they had difficulty getting through to a commander to call for artillery support. Um, and, uh, talking to units stationed nearby was also an issue resulting in them firing on each other from time to time. And this is all again under the electronic warfare stuff because the Russians are just boosting this, uh, putting out a stronger signal on wow. their channels yeah. to interrupt their, their transmission. <coughs> um, he said, uh, troops in more specialized units have been issued U S supplied encrypted radios and can speak to one another unhindered. One soldier said, but the radio's high output means that the Russians can find the locations they're broadcasting from. Oh, man. <laughs> so they either can't communicate or if they do communicate through these encrypted weapons, they the, uh, encrypted yeah. radios, they give away their position. Yeah. So either way, they're giving away their position. Yeah. And um, so I, I found this interesting. And I, was, uh, I was talking again to my mom about this. And she said, you know, so what are you saying that we're... Um, sabotaging the Ukrainians? I said, no. I think that we just haven't considered, like, uh, there's a bunch of things that the U.S. military hasn't considered because they haven't had to deal with. Yeah. Um, first off, uh, we haven't fought a, a... There's a big difference between fighting a bunch of sheep herders or goat herders. <laughs> goat herders. <laughs> you know, in Afghanistan and an undeveloped, uh, unindustrialized military... Um, with small arms and not modern weapons for the most part, no. and dealing with a country that has the same capabilities well, that you do. It's a, it's an insurgent fight. Like, I mean, that's what, what we did in Afghanistan and all these other countries. We're fighting mm -hmm. insurgency. Yeah. Like, that's, that's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. That's not what's going on in Russia and Ukraine. You've got a modern military, mm -hmm. modern-ish. I mean, it's, it is Russia, so. <laughs> yeah, I, it's still pretty modern. I mean, I know. It's, I, I make jokes, but, yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's, real, it's, it's a real military. Though. Yeah. Like, um, just saying. Like, yeah. there, there's a difference there between mm -hmm. the two, you know. Um, and then secondly, uh, the U.S. hasn't fought a war on its own soil in, in over two centuries. Yeah, that's true. Right, and I don't think that there's a real understanding of what it's like to maintain modern weapons in the field yeah. when you can't move them to a safe location. Yeah, like even in Afghanistan and and uh, Iraq and uh, all these places, yeah. like you can withdraw these weapons into a, a safe neighboring nation for repairs and and maintenance, yeah. um, and continually cycle in new stuff. <laughs> the Ukrainians don't have the ability to do that, and we don't have the ability to do that for the Ukrainians. No, no, they're kind of hung out. So to this dry is a very different department. kind of situation. So like the howitzer issue. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like I, I think that the maybe the top brass in, in the U.S. just hasn't considered the real complications of fighting with modern weaponry in a place where in the field yeah. where you're in the field all the time. Exactly. Yeah. And um, I don't know. I think it's uh. I think it's an example of just unforeseen consequences of just not really thinking through all the implications of what it is that you're trying to do and yeah. not considering the realities on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you haven't yeah. had to deal with them. Exactly. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I, I, I think that we, we've certainly seen that the Russian military isn't as strong as there were some, um, as it was thought to be. As it was thought to be. Yeah. But I think that we're also seeing that the U.S. military technology yeah. isn't as strong as what it's supposed to be either. Yeah. 
in real world conditions. Yeah. Yeah. We got, we got some work to do ourselves. Yeah. And, uh, but I mean, it hardly matters in the end because, um, like Ukraine had no chance in this. Yeah. Yeah. This was always going to, it was always going to resolve to an end. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I think there has been some, uh, evidence that the U S might be trying to find a way out of this. (laughs) Is there? I haven't seen any of um, that. Just a little bit, like, you know, some some discussion about whether Zelensky needs to redefine what victory is yeah. and, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Wow. Um, I, we've been saying that from the beginning. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, but to have U.S. officials making similar comments now that's a, might... Well, that's a good sign, though. Yeah. That may be a sign that they're going to finally wind this thing down. Yeah. Um, I, I certainly hope so. Uh, as we were saying on the last podcast, this has been far more damaging to the West than it's been to Russia. Yeah. yeah. Um, and well, and the repercussions of this are going to go on for decades. Yeah. Uh, regardless of how it ends, I mean, you know, the 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 some of some of the things that's happened, particularly with Russia, mm-hmm. as far as the way they sell oil and stuff, like there's going to be far-reaching implications here. Yeah. Yeah, and they're, that's not, and they're not good ones for us. No, like, they're not. They're not positive. <laughs> um, I, I think there's a point where the the U.S. specifically has to recognize that there is a level of interdependence in this world economically now, where you can't just go bully your way to get everything you want. That actually, like some of the people that you're trying to bully around, are are you're more dependent on them than they are on you. Yeah. Yeah. And so maybe try and, um, you know, catch more flies with honey. I was fixed to say, yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's, you know, try, being friends with everybody has its benefits. Yeah. I mean, the the truth is, and I think, I think I've talked about it before on the podcast because I see uh, very different ways that major powers in the world are trying to relate to the rest of the world. And I see in China, and this is in very general terms, this yeah. is like at the high macro level. Yeah. Um, China is trying to rule the world economically. Yeah. They're going in everywhere and using their economic power and influence um, to gain more political influence. Yeah. And the Russians are doing it, have been doing it diplomatically for the most part. Yeah. Uh, regardless of what you think of Russia now, um, Putin and Lavrov have been all over the world over the last um, decade plus uh, creating various, not alliances, but friendly relations with nations everywhere. Yeah. Um, and uh, the U.S. has been trying to do it militarily. Yep. But just yes. forcing our will down. We have the biggest stick. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and it can be effective, but only for a period of time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's the reason empires fall mm. is because you can only you can only wield the stick for so long. <laughs> yeah, and um, China's way generates more wealth, yeah. and Russia's is probably fairly wealth neutral. Yeah, and the U.S.'s just drains wealth, just drains it out the <laughs> bank, man. <laughs> so we've we've also chosen the wrong path. Biggest like. debt in history. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So on that happy note, yeah. <laughs> um, after we've run about ten minutes longer than uh, than when we were closing, let's let's close one eight three three stop war stop war, and uh, we plan to be back in a week. Um, yeah, yeah. I think so. I'm, I may be more like Saturday next <laughs> week because because I got family coming in town. Yeah, during the week, but um, maybe we'll get some of your family on the podcast. I doubt it. <laughs> I'd love to have your brother. Uh, I would too, but I don't think that he's interested in talking politics with us for Pro- an hour. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> um, Get the idea he doesn't really have my politics. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He shares more than he would probably like to admit, but he... Yeah, yeah there are some... Um, yeah, problems. Yeah. Anyway, uh, but we, we'll, you know, we'll be back um, next week. In the meantime, follow us on Facebook... You can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, and Podbean. Um, like and share, comment. Uh, as I said, if you've got a good like legal analysis website to recommend to me, please send it to Michael at thelibertymike.com. As always, if you have interesting stories, uh, comments, etc., you can send those to me as well. Um, and then, 
And then we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Later.